The next credit under location and transportation is high priority site. It is a design credit similar to all other location and transportation credits. It is a design credit. Coherential projects can earn three points and other projects can earn up to two points. The previous credit sensitive land protection is all about the sites which are not to be developed. Whereas this credit is all about the sites that are encouraged to be developed. Achieving this credit high priority site will automatically earn LT credit to sensitive land protection. The intent of this credit is to encourage project location in areas with development constraints and thereby promoting the health of the surrounding area. Development constraint means development of sites which has restrictions to develop. There are three options to achieve this credit. The first option is to develop an infill site located in historic district. The second option is to develop a site located in priority designation. And third option is to redevelop a brownfield site. Let us now discuss each of these options in detail. The first option is to develop an infill site located in historic district. There are two requirements within this option. The first requirement is that the site should be an infill site. The second requirement is that the site should be located in a historic district. Infill sites are located within developed area. Here is an example for infill site. Most of the plots in the neighborhood are already developed. The plots which are undeveloped are considered to be infill sites. Here is another example for infill site. You can see that the site is located in well-developed neighborhood. For lead requirement, 75% or more of a buildable area within half a mile of project boundary should be previously developed. Let me explain this in little more detail. Here is our project boundary. So let us mark 800 meter from the project boundary. Within the half a mile surrounding from project boundary, 75% of buildable area should be previously developed. So buildable area excludes streets, roads, right of way, water bodies, etc. Right of way is area reserved for transportation transmission lines or sewage lines or any other infrastructure. The second part of the requirement is that the infill site should be located in historic district. Historic district is a group of buildings, structures, objects and sites that have been designated as historically or architecturally significant by local planning or permitting agency. Developments in historic district has restrictions imposed by historic preservation agency. The restrictions may include specific exterior building materials, limitations on total building height, uh, restrictions on demolition. Generally, there is no demolition allowed in historic districts except for hazardous or structurally unsound part of the building. Any demolishment should be approved by the local historic board. The second option to achieve this credit is to select a land that has been designated as priority designation. Priority designations are sites wherein government, city or different strategic partners recommends the development due to various social, economical and demographic reasons. As an example, government may encourage development of economically backward areas to improve the employment opportunity in the neighborhood. 
For projects in US, the following sites may be considered as priority designations. A site listed by EPA National Priorities List, a Federal Empowerment Zone Site, a Federal Enterprise Community Site, a Federal Renewal Community Site, a Low Income Community, a Difficult Development Area or any other equivalent agencies. The project can earn this credit even if a portion of a site is located in a priority designation. The third option to achieve this credit is to redevelop a brownfield site. Brownfield site is a site which is previously contaminated and it requires remediation prior to development. For example, a site which was previously a workshop, a chemical factory, gas station, etc. might have polluted the soil, it has to be remediated prior to the development. Brownfield sites are identified by three ways. Number one, brownfield sites may be declared by government agencies. Number two, brownfield sites are listed in local voluntary cleanup programs. Local voluntary cleanup program is a program where brownfield sites are sold at a subsidized price for development to compensate for the remediation cost and effort. Third way is that the site is confirmed to be contaminated through phase 2 environmental site assessment as per ASTM E1903 method. For documentation, vicinity map is required for both option 1 and option 2. For documentation in option 1, first you have to confirm that the site is an infill site by calculating the development within 800 meter from the project boundary. Number 2, you have to confirm that the site is located in a historic district through historic preservation agency. Again for option 2, a vicinity map is required to confirm that the site is located in a priority designation. For option 3, appropriate evidences are required to determine the brownfield status of the site. This credit is eligible for exemplary performance under innovation category. The project may earn exemplary performance by pursuing option 1 plus either option 2 or option 3. Let me now summarize the requirements of LT credit 3 high priority site. Similar to all other location and transportation credits, it is a design credit. Currential projects can earn 3 points, others can earn 2 points. This credit is all about the sites that are good for development. Whereas the previous credit, sensitive land protection, the previous credit, sensitive land protection is all about the sites that are not to be developed. Hence, achievement of high priority site will automatically earn will also earn LT credit to sensitive land protection. Okay. The intent of this credit is to encourage development of sites of areas with constraints, meaning there are restrictions in developing, there are restrictions in development and thereby and thereby protecting the health of the surroundings. So that is the intent of this credit. The credit can be achieved by three ways. There are three options. The first option is to locate the site in an infill. The site has to be infill site located within historic district. And the second option is to locate the site in priority designation. The second option is to locate the site in a priority designation and third option is to redevelop a brownfield site. Now let us discuss each option in detail. Infill site. Infill sites are located within developed area. They are located within developed area. For lead requirement, 75% of buildable area 
within half a mile from project boundary previously developed it should be previously developed to be considered as infill site 75 percent of buildable area within half a mile from project boundary uh, has to be previously developed okay uh, let me explain this uh, with a diagram so this is your your project boundary so surroundings the the language used in the credit is that 800 meters from the surroundings 800 meters from the project boundary so this we'll consider this as 800 meters or half a mile and within that 75 percent of buildable area now what is this buildable area so buildable area includes includes plots basically plots where you can build where you can legally build it excludes streets roads water bodies right of ways right of ways are areas reserved for transportation or transmission or sewage line or any other infrastructure so these uh, are excluded from the buildable area generally buildable area includes uh, plots where you can uh, legally develop it so that is about infill site historic district a group of buildings or structures can be considered historically significant by local historic preservation board so if a site is a, a infill site and it, if it is located in a historic district you can earn this credit some of the challenges in developing a historic a site in historic district is that so that we have some restrictions in developing in historic district like we have to use specific finishes and building materials so that you preserve the historic nature you can't make a, a fancy a glazed building within historic district number two the building height may be limited and uh, uh, demolitions are generally not allowed demolitions not allowed unless it is structurally unsound or it, it is contaminated and any demolitions has to be approved by the, the historic board so that is about uh, option one infill site within historic district now option two uh, is to develop a priority designation is to locate the site in a priority designation priority designations are identified by government agencies as good for certain type of development the priority designations may be low income areas special economy zones list of priority designations are generally published by by local state or federal government agencies another point to remember here is that even if a portion of site is located in priority designation the project can be on the point the third option is to redevelop a brownfield site The third option is to redevelop a brownfield site. Brownfield sites are basically contaminated sites, unfit for development as it is. It has to be remediated. It has to be remediated prior to development. There are three ways by which you can identify brownfield sites. Number one. Government agencies declare brownfield site, and number two, the site is listed for uh, the site is listed under local voluntary cleanup program. Uh, local voluntary cleanup program is a program wherein um, the property is sold at subsidized price to compensate for 
remediation for cost of remediation and the third way is that the project team has confirmed that the site is contaminated by performing environmental site assessment by using ASTM procedure E1903. Uh, environmental site assessment has two phases. So to be confirmed as contaminated site, you have to complete both environmental site assessment phase 1 and phase 2. Very often, buildings may be contaminated. Buildings contaminated with lead or asbestos are not considered to be brownfield sites. They are not brownfield sites. To be considered as brownfield sites, the soil and or water in the site should be contaminated. So that is about brownfield uh, redevelopment. This credit is eligible for exemplary performance. If you pursue option 1 plus option 2 or option 3. For documentation in option 1, calculate density in half a mile boundary and you have to attach the vicinity map. You have to attach the vicinity map to confirm that the site is an infill site. And number 2, you have to get a confirmation from a historic preservation board. Option 2, you have to again submit a vicinity map and confirm that uh, the site is located in a priority designation. Option 3, you have to document that the site is a brownfield site, contaminated and a brownfield site. So that completes LT Credit 3 High Priority Sites. If you have any questions, please ask them in the forum section. Thank you very much.